today I'm going to be covering options for a retrofit upgrade in a dipped headlight beam. Um, I uh, have been looking at upgrading my headlights in my BMW F30 3 Series 328i. Uh, personally, um, I wasn't too happy about the kind of yellowed look of my headlights. Some of the new models have the kind of xenon or halogen type lights that are a bit brighter and um, I kind of wanted to update my car to make it look a bit brighter and for, to help with night driving. Um, and so I, I did a bit of reading and uh, I thought maybe some of the information that I found out might be quite useful uh, to yourself. Um, so really when you're looking to update, uh, upgrade your halogen headlights, whether it's the dipped or the main beam, there's really three main options. Uh, the first one, which is the most easiest, is to swap a halogen light for a different halogen light. So these range from ultra bright um, to maybe some that are whiter and even some that have like a blue film over the bulb uh, to really give that kind of xenon look. Um, depending on the, the bulb that you pick, some are road legal, some aren't. So just uh, that to be aware of. Um, the second option is a, uh, a, um, a halogen to a xenon upgrade. So these are again are a straight swap. Uh, generally these are much brighter and from the limited amount of research I've done I found that these aren't road legal. Um, people tend not to go down this route and I won't be covering it. The third option, um, which was the option that interested me most, was to upgrade the halogen light for an LED light. Um, so um, what we're going to look at in this video uh, is uh, the LED lights that I purchased. Um, I'm going to run you through the fitting process, what tools you'll need, how long it'll take. Um, and then once I've installed it, I've got some videos uh, so you can see exactly what the difference is between the original halogen light and the LED light. Um, some of my personal opinions on, on uh, how it looks. Um, maybe some issues in terms of legislation and how fit for purpose they are and hopefully that will help you uh, in making your decision. So the first thing we'll look at is exactly what you get when you buy one of these LED uh, lighting kits and then we'll move on to look at the installation and then what it looks like from there. So here's the kit that I bought. I got this from Amazon. It was about £30 on the Black Friday sale, reduced from about £40, £45 usually. Um, it's a kind of generic brand. I just checked out the reviews first on Amazon. Uh, a couple of people commenting that it, that it was compatible with my car. So just looking at the at the different components here, what you've got is a shape similar in size to um, the halogen bulb. But you can see there's a strip here for the, the LED luminescent part of it. Um, you'll be familiar with this part, which is uh, straight swap compatible with the plugs, which um, fit into the normal headlight housing. This is a, a quite a dense metal um, heatsink housing which contains a fan which helps to cool. These produce a lot of heat, so it's important um, that you can dissipate that heat. Some of them have uh, long strips of metal that come out of the back, which um, help dissipate the heat out of the unit. Generally, these are better with a, with a fan unit because they ensure the cooling and also you don't have to cut any nasty holes into your the back of your headlight housing to allow that to come out. Um, here you have a kind of voltage current um, Thing, similar to I guess what you'd have on a laptop charger. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm not familiar with that. And this is your plug. Thing I would so. say before you install these is give them a quick eye over, make sure there's no rattling parts. Um, I found that the cap, which is a small metal ring, which only has teeth connecting on the two sides here, uh, came loose and rattled. Um, so it's definitely worth making sure that these are tight because the last thing you want is for these to come undone with the vibrations of the car. So if like me, you're looking to change the dip beam, which is this one, you may find that it's quite um, difficult to access it from this port. Actually, what you can only access from the bonnet lid uh, is the side beam, which is here, and that goes into there. Um, so in order to be able to change the dipped headlight beam, what you're gonna have to do for a right-hand change is put your, lip, put your wheel all the way to the left, and uh, you'll see the access panel is here. So I've got the bracket off uh, just to show you what I did before. I put the screw in there, uh, the flathead screwdriver, sorry, in there, twisting it, it popped right out. When I did the inner side, I did that, and then pulled it from the edge, and it came straight out. So here's what we can see behind. Uh, see this circular plate. So with a quick uh, 20 degree rotation to uh, the counterclockwise direction, I was able to remove the uh, plate. And behind there, you can see uh, 
Here's the headlight, the back of the headlight housing um, with the wiring connection to the back of the um, of the halogen bulb. Once the uh, electrical connector has been pulled straight off the back, uh, here you can see the back of the light bulb. At the top here, at the 12 o'clock position, you'll see a single clip that needs pulling back uh, and then you can get the headlight bulb. The clips are in the corner here. I'm gonna take that one off, flick that one back and this one. Now, you should be able to free that bulb and pull it out of the back of the housing, like so. See, so let's put this bulb in. Uh, you can see the small notch on the top there. What I'm gonna do is put that in the 12 o'clock position, uh, fish this through and put it into the housing here. And with any luck, that should just clip straight Once in. you've got the bulb um, fitted correctly and you might have to have a little play with those clips just to make sure it's tight because the fitting um, where the clips sit on this very narrow piece uh, of metal here uh, fits a little bit different on the plastic. Uh, once you've done that, you'll have to go ahead and then plug uh, the clip from the uh, transformer box into the original clip you pulled out of the back of the bulb. Uh, like me, if you put it in the wrong way, you'll notice the bulb doesn't come on. Uh, so try it before you put the housing back together again. Um, and then you'll find that uh, at least one way, it'll turn on that bulb. Clip in. Done. On. And finally, this should be the easy bit. Clip in. In, in. And the right hand headlight looks very white in comparison to the uh, other bulb. Compare it to this side. Uh, you can't really see it too well on the camera. There you go. You can see that that's a bit more orange. And that one's a lot more white. The flickering you'll see on the camera, uh, that's because it's a high frame rate. The human eye can't see that. And there's a comparison here. Uh, it's probably better that we do this at night. So I hope you found the installation video useful and uh, some of the clips uh, from the dash cam and, and from my phone camera, which kind of show, it's difficult to see really, you need to see it with the human eye uh, to see exactly what it looks like. But um, so, I mean, uh, in summary, really, what I'm gonna do is give some, some pros and cons for, for the LED lighting upgrade. Um, and first, in terms of the, the pros, um, when you buy these bulbs, um, you know you're going to be getting a bright light that looks a lot whiter, um, maybe a little bit bluer. It really is going to update the look of the car. Um, that's really good. They are brighter than the normal bulbs, so there's an argument to say that the visibility is better. It gives you more light. Um, also, I've read that you can get up to 10,000 hours, so depending on the build quality of the kit that you've bought or considering to buy, um, it might reduce the number of bulb changes that you're doing. So that's kind of really where the positives ended for me. Um, the negatives, um, when I first installed the light, I was very cautious and a bit unsure about just how blue they were. Um, when I had a little look on the internet, as I said, I found various advice. Um, but what I did see is that anything over 4,000 Kelvin, so 5,000 Kelvin or like the ones that I bought, 6,000 Kelvin, you're moving from a, from a blue light um, towards a, uh, sorry, from a white light at 4,000 Kelvin towards a more blue light at 6,000. 
Now I've also read, and again, I'm not sure on the legislation, that having a blue beam is illegal because the only um, vehicles on the road that are allowed to have a blue light are those that are emergency services vehicles. So there's an instant issue there. Um, I also struggled really to find any LED kits that were at the 4,000 Kelvin um, range. Um, secondly, uh, these the kit that I bought was 8,000 lumens, which is equivalent to 8,000 candles or 4,000 per headlight. These are very bright um, and again, mixed uh, information I could find, but I think this is brighter than is advised. Um, the third issue is in terms of actually the way the light is casted onto the road. So when you've got a halogen bulb, what you have is you have, um, the bulb has a, a glass around the edge um, and the light spreads out 360 degrees. Um, and in a regular headlight housing, you have the kind of reflector type, um, which is obviously designed to work with the halogen bulb to uh, cast the light on the road, um, and, but to also not uh, blind oncoming drivers while still giving you visibility above. So there's some quite clever things that the, the housing does to kind of cast the light away from oncoming vehicles. Now the first thing I notice is that this um, deteriorates when using an LED bulb. Um, so the light generally casts a lot higher and to counteract that I had to dip the headlights. So whilst they are a lot brighter, what you might find is you're having to dip them so much to avoid blinding oncoming drivers that it actually makes the visibility worse. Uh, and the blue light sometimes, especially when it's wet, it kind of casts off the road a little bit different. And personally, I find that whilst it's nicer to have a whiter bulb, um, the, the regular halogens work better. Um, another issue is in terms of it passing an MOT test. In 2016, there was some legislation introduced in terms of that level at which the lights were cut off. If these beams are, are casting higher, uh, then you might find that you might have to take these out to pass an MOT, depending on who you're testing. But of course, when you're driving around in your car in the night, personally, from my opinion of driving around with those lights on for a couple of days is it's not going to take very long before you get pulled over and, and questioned about it and that's really not something that I want to entertain so for me it wasn't for me um, I've removed the light and I've fitted the original uh, headlight bulbs back in personally what I what I think I'm going to be doing is having a look at getting another uh, halogen bulb to replace the ones in there um, and I'll maybe look at some of them that are a little bit whiter, a little bit brighter, um, and maybe I'll, I'll do a video um, to cover that when I get around to doing that. The only other thing uh, which I could do on my car, which is the F30 3 Series uh, 328i, um, is to retrofit the newer style lights. So these are the Angel Eye ones that you see on, uh, I think maybe the 64 plates and, and newer. Um, it's not really going to be something that I'm going to entertain because these kits probably cost, I don't know how much, I think there's some coding involved uh, to stop an error, there's maybe some additional wiring because there's more bulbs, um, and just to buy the lights alone you're talking in excess of a couple of hundred pounds, so for the sake of a little bit of luck, um, it wasn't for me really. Um, but in summary, I hope it's been a useful video. Um, I know a lot of people are happy with these LEDs, so maybe your opinion might might be more positive than mine, but I just kind of wanted to give all the information to help everyone make uh, the best decision. So thanks for watching. Um, I don't really do many videos at all, so probably don't subscribe. But um, anyway, I hope it was useful. Thanks, goodbye.